There are two days that stick out in the Jewish calendar. One of them is Tisha B'Av, as the most tragic, horrific day of sadness that we experience and, and, and try to connect with year after year. The other is not as famous a day, but it's probably one of the greatest days the world has ever seen. And that is the day that the, the Mishkan was built in the desert. Okay, it shows up in the Torah in Parshat Shmini. And, and, and it's called Shmini because it's the eighth day of the inauguration of the Mishkan, which is the first official day that the service in the Mishkan, the tabernacle, began. And this is a very special day. Why is it a very special day? Let's, let's look back to the beginning and we'll appreciate what that day means in the bigger picture of, of, of life and the story of creation. So what happened? First day, day one, Hashem made a world. Gan Eden, literally heaven on earth. Adam, Eve, Hashem, they were all together, everything was beautiful. One challenge, one test, the sin of the, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and what happened? They failed, we failed, mankind failed. And that caused what, what seems like a detour. Now let's figure how long was that detour? So from day two, or the end of day one, certainly day two, Hashem left, right? We said, Rish Hashir Hashim says that uh, when Adam sinned, the divine presence that was with him in, 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 in Gan Eden, in this world, together with him, left. So what happened was after day one, or as a result of day one, the world that was mankind and, and Hashem together in this beautiful way, like the, the, the analogy they bring from Shir Shirim is like a bride and groom in that private chamber that they're alone and they're intimately reveal each other one, one to the other. That unbelievable beautiful moment when you just get married and you're together with your bride for the first time alone. That union that is established. That's what this world was between us and Hashem on day one with Adam and Eve, and it was meant to be that type of relationship with, with all of mankind. But because of the mistake of day one, so day two, Hashem was gone. It's like separated, day two. Imagine you have a, a marriage and all of a sudden things don't go well, and they're going through a separation period. So day two was the beginning of that separation period between us and Hashem. Okay, so, so, so when did that separation period end? So you'll, it's still not fully ended, but when did it end, or at least partially ended? So fast forward over 2,000 years, about 2,440 some odd years, I don't know exactly the number, but more than 2,000 years later, there's a, a day pops up in, 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 in our Jewish history. It's a day that God, that God said, make a tabernacle, make a mishkan. And Moshe built it together from all of the materials that we all donated. And on the day, that Shemini, the, the eighth day of the inauguration, we started officially the, the, the service of, the, of that mishkan, which is like the Bet HaMikdash. And before that day really got fully into action, Aaron was very saddened. Why? Because all the work that we have done for seven days, and we did not see Hashem back. So Hashem was still waiting to come back. Finally, Aaron brings that first offering from him, and the Shekhinah comes back. And it was the greatest joy and celebration for the Jewish people for 2,000, over 2,000 years. Meaning what? The world was restored to what it once was 2,000 years ago. So from day two until then, we were missing Hashem. And Hashem said, now I'm back. Now I've come back in the Mishkan. I'm back with you. Unbelievable, right? But it's not so unbelievable, because that day is considered a happy and sad day. If that would be the end of the story, and that would have been the reunion between husband and wife, Hashem and us, and we lived happily ever after, so then that day would be the happiest day ever. But it wasn't a fully happy day, because there was some sadness attached to that day. Right? On the pshat level, on the simple level of the story, it's because none of an avihu died. So that, that then just overshadowed that day with a bit of sadness. In a deeper sense, we have to understand that why did they die? So we were taught that the, the death of the righteous, the death of the tzaddikim, is, the, is an atonement for the Jewish people and for our sins. So the reason why they had to die that day was because we did not completely, fully rectify this, the, the sins that we have committed. So there was still a blemish left, and that's part of why they died. All death is connected with sin. So the fact that they died is an indication that we were not fully restored to our true, full status and glory of husband and wife together in that bridal chamber. Uh, the deeper appreciation of this, though, was brought in a, in a very deep book, a uh, Kabbalistic book by, uh, called Share Ora, the, the Gates of Light. And it's such a powerful idea, it's brought later, hundreds of years later, by uh, Rabbi Yeshua Horowitz, the Shlach HaKadosh. He brings it in his writings. And he says like this, he says that the reason why Yom HaShmini is, a, is both a sad and happy day is because it's true on the one hand God came back to us, but let's look at how he came back to us. So where is Hashem? In that Mishkan that Hashem, that we built for Hashem, and Hashem said, I will come and join you in that Mishkan, where is he? Where is the divine presence in that Mishkan? So we're taught that there are the keruvim, the two angels on top of the ark, 
right? The, that's exactly where Hashem came back to us. That's where the divine presence rested. So he explains that little tiny, tiny space on top of the ark, that's where Hashem is. Now imagine, there's a verse that says that all of the heavens cannot contain Hashem. But he squeezes himself in that little tiny space between the two angels on top of the ark. So that's where the sadness lies. Think about it. Hashem had the entire world. And really, even the entire world is not fitting for him. Yet, out of the great love he has for us, he comes and squeezes himself into this little confined space in order to be with us. That's the sadness. The sadness of Yom HaShmini, even though we have a Mishkan, is that it's not the full Mishkan. It's not the full Geula. It's not complete yet. It's only partial. And here we have to start thinking about not our own suffering and our own hardships, but the, the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence itself. And for that, the Shari Or brings an analogy. He says, imagine a king, a mighty king. There are some kings that ruled the world. Imagine a king that was so powerful that he ruled the entire world. Little by little, his kingdom weakened and reaching to the point that he actually had to flee from his enemies. He had one other friend, confidant, that he could trust. He was, happened to be a king or a governor in another nation. He had to run to him for refuge. And he took him in. He gave him a place. And he's there, and he's alive, but he's no longer the king of the world. Imagine what that king is going through. He's living in someone else's palace, someone else's bed, eating someone else's food, sleeping on someone else's couch. The, the terminology is he's a guest in someone else's house. So once upon a time, Hashem was the Balabai. This was Hashem's house. Hashem came back to us on Yom HaShemini, but he came back as a guest. That's how we, 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 we depict in this analogy the, 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 the suffering that's connected with this happy day. And that's connected to really Tisha B'Av and the idea that, we, that we're mourning a Beit HaMikdash. Hashem is here in a very limited way. We have to only find him in a few places a few times. He's not really here. It's not his world yet. And that's the idea of the happiness and sadness that comes together with the fact that we had a Mishkan and that we lost it and, and the ultimate total Happiness is going to come when he builds us a third better mikdash, which is going to be a forever mikdash. And then Hashem will no longer be like a guest, but he'll be king of the world again. And we will have our place in Yerushalayim, and we will live the life that we were meant to live. That will be the culmination and end of this 6,000, almost 6,000 year story. It started on day one. We had a beautiful, uplifting moment at about 2400, year 2400. But the end of that story is not going to be till till we have Mashiach in the final Beit HaMikdash. And that's why we have to you know, come together on Tisha B'Av and appreciate not only our tragedies that we've lived through and our suffering, but we have to also think for Hashem. He goes through suffering and tragedy together with us. In every tragedy we go through, He joins us in that tragedy. So He's suffering with us. And this beautiful teaching from the Shari Orah shows us a bit of a deep appreciation and insight. The Shekhinah goes through so much to be with us, but it also goes through its Tsar. It's, it's suffering. Imagine, Hashem, Hashem made a world, it's His world, and He says, I'm willing to even be here as a guest, just to be with you. Think of Him a bit, and let's hopefully use this idea as inspiration to kind of like change our lives a bit and maybe bring Him into this world more than just as a guest, but let's make this world His again, without Hashem.